Hello, Joey. Uh, hello, Pauline. How are you? Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Toots number... 15. 15. Wow. 15. So 15. You should be a perfect quilter by now, having oh. 15 lessons. I don't know. I think it takes a 1,000. <laughs> mm, it does. It, and like every quilt you make is so different, as you're probably realising, because I know you've been doing a little bit of other sewing and little projects you've been making. Yes, so, Which yes. is great. But well done. You've got your... Um, triangles all quilted yes. you've got all the applique done you put the little vines on them you've done a good job it's great so fantastic do you know what's next um yeah i'm no <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you're going to tell me that that's right <laughs> so what we're going to do is we need to get a straight edge here okay, okay. because we want to get it straight because when we put it onto the quilt we need a straight line mm -hmm. to be able to sew because you know what happens with a wonky line it oh, won't yes. look good. That's won't right. Look good. That's right. So, are we going to be using our lovely little cutter today? No, we're not. We're not. Wow. So, what we're going, what we need to do, because you know, like things move when you quilt, as you can see, it's all pulled in. Mm -hmm. And I remember when we cut the backing in the wadding out, we were running a bit short on our backing, yes, we so were. we had to skimp a little bit. But I think we're still going to be okay with it. But we're not going to trim all three sides. Okay. We're only going to trim this straight long. And why, edge. why are we only going to trim that one? Because these are going to go onto the corners of the quilt, four uh -huh. triangles onto each corner. So once we stitch them on, we'll then trim them back to be even all the so way around. We'll trim then the whole quilt. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So that's why we're just going to get a straight edge here first to start with. So that's going to be your first little exercise. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, and this is where I would use a long ruler. You know, I've been saying all along that um, I just use, I love to use this short ruler. Mm -hmm. And you did a really good job with that, folding the fabric into four. It makes it a much simpler cut. And you use the little rotary cutter. That's right. But now we've got to cut through all these thicknesses. Uh -huh. So, so um, the rotary cutter wouldn't make it, the little one? It, it will, but it's going to drag too much. Okay. So that's where... I would use a long ruler to be able to get as long a cut as I can. You can still use the short one, but it's it's harder to keep the line straight. Yes, so you've got to try and keep lining yes. it up each time you move the ruler. Exactly. So we'll use the um, the long ruler, mm -hmm. and we're going to use a bigger rotary cutter. So I keep my big rotary cutter. I don't use it to cut out all my other pieces, as, as we've learnt in the lesson. But, you know, that's a personal choice. Mm. But using this bigger blade is makes it cutting through these layers much better. Because we're going through uh, the front layer, we're going through the wadding and through a back layer as well. And there's a bit of stiffness in that wadding still because it's still the, it's, it hasn't still been washed. The so it's still got the adhesive yeah. there. And that, that's exactly true. So what we'll do is we'll use this line on the board mm -hmm. here to line up as straight as we can get it along here. Okay. Then we're going to lay your ruler down. And now what you need to do is find the shortest ah. piece. So you've got to keep an eye on the back. So I was wondering about that. Would it be better to cut it from the back, given that this is mostly up level with the wadding exactly. on this side. Exactly, and that's a very good um, observation of yours because it, it will be easier to look at it this way. So we'll line it up here, as level as we can get it. Oops, we need, we need to come along there, yeah. You know, and if people are working on this at home, they might be using a much bigger cutting board. So you can see now, if we lay that laying straight down there, you're going to be able to get and we won't lose any of this backing. No, but we might up here. Ah, I see. So we will need to sneak it in a little bit further. Now we'll be right. Okay. So we'll line it up here. Now I'm just going to move the board over a bit closer to you so that you can get to that. So remember, you can only cut to here before you run off the board. Otherwise I'll cut yes. your lovely... Felt now you have to board. press a little bit harder here because remember you've got the three layers to cut through. Now this yeah. is a bit... A okay, bit... you don't have to put a lot of pressure here. I've noticed you're putting a mm -hmm. lot of pressure down. Put your finger up here, mm -hmm. that's it. 
And don't stress your hand too much. Just lay your cutter back a bit mm. more. Now you're right. And you can hear the cut happening. It, does, it actually sounds quite decisive, right. that cut. Now close that blade. Oh, of course. So there oh, you go. Oh, that's a nice cut. Perfect, perfect. That's a beautiful cut. So now cut. let's move this down. So now this is where it's really interesting because we can use the grid, the line on the board with one of your quilting lines and align that up. Nice. Now just cut a little bit more. I'm going to line the ruler up nicely with the previous That's cut. That's right. That's and excellent. I just saw an example of why I should close the blade because my hand That's just right. it. That's right. It went very close to the edge of the blade. That's and I notice nice... as we visit all the shows now, people are making comments about you with the blade. They are. <laughs> and and you've, you've learned about that. So now. And they're all having a, a, their, their little opinion about uh, me learning about the blade. Yes. <laughs> this is getting easier now because we can line up these yes, lines. Yes, so you've here. got this line. And, it, and this is why we've got all these measurements and lines on all our tools. They're there to help us. Um, get everything as accurate as we can. If we didn't have those, you'd be really challenged with That's it. That's right. Good job. I love the sound of that, that cut. Yep. That's doing a nice... Oh, that's doing a beautiful cut. All right, so one more. One last little bit. Now, if we had a big cutting surface... Yes, you wouldn't be moving it as much. We would have only moved this ruler probably once because yes. it's such a beautiful long ruler. Yeah, that's right. And, and as with all of our rulers that we produce here at PQW, they've got the non-slip um, surface on the back of them, so they, they will never slip. And the um, non-slip um, component of the ruler will never wear out. Mm. And you can notice in. there it wasn't slipping no, on it doesn't you as you're slip. it's, it's etched in so nicely in there. Yeah, it's really good. So there's your first trim. Look at that. So and that's perfect. Neat. That's perfect, very neat. Perfect. So... I've, I've been ahead and, and trimmed up some of these for you. Oh, she helped me with my homework. <laughs> so you can see now, remember how we marked out mm -hmm. our little vine last week, you know, in the last lesson? Not last week, it was last lesson. Wasn't it, it was, that was weeks ago. It was weeks so ago. So <laughs> you can see they're all aligning up. That's nice. Okay. So then it's going to make that a nice pattern. It's going to all make it flow around. around, which is great. So, you know, good work. And we've got them now all nice and straight. So that's three. You ask and ask. I know you're going to ask me a question. Am I? Mm -hmm. What's next? Where's the fourth one? Uh, where is the fourth one, <laughs> by the way? Well, I've been doing a little bit of homework for you because I think we need to show people where we're going with this. And mm -hmm. I need to show you where we're going with it. So I've been doing a bit of stitching. And, and I had to experiment because you know what our biggest problem was? We were running out of this fabric. That's right, we were. And we completely ran out of this backing. Mm -hmm. But we were out visiting some quilt shops doing some of our schoolhouse talks and showing people all about our demonstrations that we do at any quilt shop that wants to have us mm -hmm. come and do it and show it to their customers. We found some more of this we fabric. Did. We did. In a little country town <laughs> and, and we were just so thrilled. So it's going to make it easy but because we were short on this fabric I really had to think long and hard of how I would get you to put this quilt together mm. because I know we both looked at a lot of different shops at something else that would complement this but we were not finding the right color tone no no there was something it, it would either have a little too much yellow or it would be too much on the blue side of things and, and I did see you going around the shop with that red <sighs> Um, color balance tool. Have we got that? We there? do have one. Here. Yeah. So you know, I'd seen you walking around the shop with this because that was obviously helping you pick up the right tone. Well, this is what you taught me very early on in the very first lesson. We learned about how to use the color balance tool to find the right tones of fabric. So I had the little samples. Yep. And then I had the color balance tool and just went around to all the different bolts of fabric and tried to see what's going to tone in best. And, and that's the best thing. Keep it in your handbag when you're going out shopping for for um, fabric. Keep one of these in your handbag. So when you're shopping and you're looking for the right colour tone, take some samples of your fabric exactly as you mm -hmm. did 
and it really worked well. It really does work well and you know what it makes an interesting talking point if you're going to have coffee with a friend and you're going through your bag and they spot it they say what is this thing in your bag? <laughs> well you could say I brought my heart to you, <laughs> my red heart. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so we couldn't find a fabric, so I had to really spend quite some time working out how we would join these triangles onto the quilt. Because remember, we're doing it quilt as you go, mm. so there's different steps we have to take. So I'm going to show you the quilt. I know you haven't seen it. And I'm going to show you where our next step's going, mm -hmm. and then we're going to show you how to do the next step. Excellent. And we've only got a couple of lessons left and the we quilt do. will be finished. It will be. So, How exciting will right, that be? All right, so let's, let's get out the quilt and show you what we're going to be doing. So I think we need to cut. Cut. <laughs> we need to cut. <laughs> and we'll show you how we're going to be doing this. Well, here's the quilt. This is what I'm going to be showing you. So this part here. Yes. Is, is going to be, that, is this where the triangle will join? Or? That's where the triangle okay. will join. So I've put some on here mm -hmm. so you can see the direction. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to explain to you about this. And this can be made any width. But okay. we had to work with the size of our triangles and the amount of fabric we had left. So what we're going to do is we're going to quilt this first with mm -hmm. your backing and your wadding. Mm -hmm. Because we always quilt first, don't we? Before we join things together, right. we always Who quilt. Who says you should quilt last? <laughs> that's right. Quilt first. So I'll show you how we put this design on. It's very simple design to quilt because all it is is sewing along like this. It's really nice though because it, it sort of flows in with our little stems that we have here and, and the shape of our flower pattern that we have there. Well, I think it will all tie together nicely mm. and, and that's what I... You know, I spend a lot of time trying to get it all to flow together. So we're going to do this first. Then we're going to add our trims, mm -hmm. our bias, so that the, the trim on our triangles run right through. And then we're going to join it with another sashing. And this is a narrow, quite a narrow sashing that you've used there. It is, that's three quarters of an inch mm. wide. And I felt, I did start out with an inch wide, but it didn't balance. Mm. It didn't balance back with this one. So we'll talk about that in the next lesson and how to balance your sizes and everything. Okay. So, you know, that all that information will come. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get you to, um, I've got it cut ready for you because I had to cut it out of the fabric. So we're going to iron our three layers together. So I've cut this four inches wide. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is this the one that we picked up? We did. We, were away? Isn't that, we did. So it's a very good match, isn't it? Well, it's, it's not quite... I think it's a different dye lot mm. and people will realise out there that fabrics, it's like wool, it's like mm. a lot of things, there's different dye lots, but it works. Mm. It's it works quite, perfectly it's very close. Fine. So we're going to put our wadding down on top of our backing. backing. Now, and we're going to put our sashing on top. Now, I've cut these two underneath, four inches mm -hmm. wide, the backing and the wadding, four inches wide. I've cut this three and a half. Okay. okay. And so, what's what's going on here? What's this oh, part That's for? a surprise. You're going to find <laughs> out about that soon. <laughs> She's always so full of surprises. Well, it's the only way I could get the fabric to fit. Oh. I had to add to the ends. Like, okay. Guess what? It's on this end too. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So, got so it's to going to pick up some of these as well. So it's just, it's continuing bring it out. the theme. Yes. Yeah, bring it out. So we're pressing this on? Yes. So we're just going to line this in the middle of our backing and our wadding. So and it won't then, matter that it's not, it's a bit narrower on no, this top part? No, because it, you know, as you know, with when we quilted the triangles, it pulled in a little mm -hmm. bit. So it's always good to have a little bit more, particularly in your backing and your wadding. You know, the, the fusible wadding, the Hobbs fusible wadding that I've got you using doesn't pull in as much as a, a non-fusible wadding, but I still allow a little bit more, particularly on a thin strip like this. Mm, because when you're stitching as well, it's just natural as you stitch that it's going to pull that fabric Absolutely. a little bit. Absolutely. And you're stitching through quite a few layers there too. That's so. right. And then the other side? Oh, yep. That's quite hot. That, well, it's a hot iron. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's surprising how hot those little lines get. It is. It actually gets very hot. So that's it. And you, you're pressing. That's fabulous. You're not ironing. So mm. that's really good. You've learnt well. And get lots of heat in there yes, so that that yes. fusible sticks. That's it. Quite well. Let's plop it back over again and have a look. So Okay, so we'll just do the rest of this. And just get 
that all lined up. You know, if you're on your big ironing board, it's going to work a lot quicker easy, for you. Yeah. It's mm. just not quite lined up there. Okay, so just press the rest of that. Just need to line it up here a bit better. Mm. Yes, because the, the, uh, the wadding is not quite lined up there, is That's it? That's it. So yep. continue ironing it and then we mark on the quilting design. So we're going to cut there. Mm -hmm. Getting lots of heat in there. And I'm going to say cut. Oh, wait. Cut. 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 So what we'll do now is we find the centre. Okay. So just fold your strip in half till you find the centre and mark it out. Mm -hmm. So we put a little mark there. Yep, just a little pencil mark here. Now you can put any quilting design you want here. Um, but I, I just felt that because we had all these curves and different shapes happening, I felt a simple curve shape here would look mm. really good. And it does. And, and like the nice thing is now that we're producing all of these quilting templates, we've got like seven different designs, mm. which have, most of them have got more than two in um, templates in each yes. pack. So I felt that this set here, um, set B, was ideal for this because set B has this lovely little design here and this is what I've mm. used. And look uh, how well that fits in with fits. what we've done there. Yeah. And then it's got the other one on the mm. back. So it's just looking around to see what sort of design would work well for you. So what I did is I put this out on an angle like such, and lining it up there. so that we, oops, which way did I go? It was this way, sorry. So we just need to centre this. So we want to centre the centre of the yes. template in the middle there as well. That's right. So we've got the line running through here. And we just then trace the design on, starting from the centre and, and then working we'll work out. Work our way out to the edge there. So then we just move that up. Mm. So you're just trying to keep this centred as much as you can and just eyeballing it because mm. by the time you quilt it and it pulls in a little bit. But look at how clever these templates are because as we do this now, this is making. That's making a half that curve. circle. So it's just going to continue on. And can you imagine doing this on a big quilt where you end up with the circles? Fabulous. Oh, yeah. Fabulous. It's just they're very clever. And it's a continuous line of quilting. It I'm makes it right. very there easy. Go, going there. Yes. That's it. So you just continue going along like that. You get the whole design marked out. And then you simply just go and sew on the line. And we do have a special setup with the machine, don't we, when we're we sewing do. on the line. So just move that. A little that. bit accidental okay, line there. Okay, erase that one out. We can just get rid of that. That's right. And that's why we love to use that pencil because Spelling. you can see it just racing. And it's just... Yep, that's it. Such a good fabric marking pencil. Okay, next one. And line that one up with there. Yes. Yeah. I, I would just move it up a little bit because you had a little, Give a little bit little of a gap space here. There, yeah. Yep. And, and you can do these adjustments as you go um, because it hasn't come right out to the end, to the end mm. of that square, but I'll show you how to fix that. Am I going to quilt onto this square as well? No. No? No, no. I don't. Well, I don't know. You, you can make your decision on that. Do you want me to put a tiny no, little... No, you just flow it. Can so I just, just... You just flow it into one line like that. That's nice. it. Nice. Now that, finish it off. that just finishes it off like here. So now when you quilt this, when you draw the other end and you get right up to there, you're then just going to start here and you're just going to sew. So, so remember we use the open toe mm -hmm. stitch, normal sewing foot. That's You're, not a quilting, that's not a free motion no, foot, is it? No, it's not a free motion open toe foot. It is a regular sewing foot that has nothing in the front. The one that you've used for all of the quilting. Mm. Your feed dogs are up. Your stitch length set to around about three, mm -hmm. two point eight three, and you're going to then stitch along here, then sew along the edge of your border, yep, and around, along your border, around. 
So it's so easy because you're really just stitching a line. It's a curved line, but it's... Yeah, but so, all you're doing is moving and we, it. I know that you do something with the, the, um, the pressure on the foot. That's right. Yeah. We drop the pressure down. Because we're not going around a lot of tight curves here, like on, on our machine we use here, normal pressure is between 70 and 100. Mm. We're dropping it down to about 11. So Which we're is not, quite a lot. That's it is. But I didn't find that I needed to drop it down to 11 doing this small no. border. I dropped it down to about 20. Because you don't have, it's not a very tight curve no. at all. No. You're just sewing quite a nice... It's a gentle, gentle curve. curve. It's a gentle mm. curve. And when we trim this back, this little bit of stitching we've done across here is going to get possibly trimmed off. You'll mm. never see it. Mm. So I can't see the sense in starting and That's stopping. stopping. Mm. So you're going to do down one side, All then the turn around and come back the other side. How easy. There could be nothing simpler. That's, so that's <laughs> your homework. Okay. <laughs> but I've done a fair bit of it for you. So... <laughs> I better show you what's going to happen well, with the yeah, triangles. Yeah, where is that fourth and triangle? And I better let you know why these are on. Okay. What because are these for? because if you notice here, they're not on these ends. No, they're not. So you're going to do. We've done two of these border sashings without worth the, out the squares. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we do next, once we get this all finished, this is going to be stitched onto here. Mm -hmm. Right, aligning this up with this, mm -hmm. but we're going to talk about this in the next lesson. Now, so you're we're lining no that up here with this. That's right. right. And you notice this is a little bit bigger. We've mm -hmm. purposely made that a bit bigger, so it's three and a half inches here. Doesn't matter what this length is, and I just cut a scrap. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to sew that on there, and then we put a sashing over the top. Oh, I see. Okay. So the sash will it the sashing will come down over here. Oh, I don't know. Or are along here it's going to come along here okay and it's going to look like uh -huh. this huh. okay well, look at that so we're going to have a sashing each side because we need to cover the seam here and the seam here mm -hmm. but it's going to make it really interesting so the reason we haven't put the squares on these two these are the two sashings that go on first, mm -hmm. but we're going to cover all of that in the next lesson. But before we put the, once we get the sashing done, we're going to need to put this little bit of bias in mm. to run through. Mm. But we're going to cover all of that because I think, you know, you getting the quilting done and I would like you to make up some more bias. Uh -huh. Because we need to continue our little... That's Vine exactly going right. Going all the way That's through, exactly right. So together. you can appreciate how this is all going to come together once we start putting all of these triangles on. So the reason of what we have to do, we have to put these two on first, the two side ones mm -hmm. on first. They're short. Again. So you measure from here to here. So this is again we're doing a jigsaw puzzle again. It's exactly. all about the jigsaw puzzle. Exactly. Puzzles. So before we put that on though, the sashing that you're going to quilt, this one, has to come on here first because we have to have this extension. So we'll put the sashing on, the same as this. Yes. Then the triangle. That's right. And then we're going to talk about the triangles on the, the side. The two side thing. triangle. So, and that's why we want to do that in the next lesson because that's really important that we learn how to line all of this up and then how we square all of this back. Mm. And then after that, We've just got to do a binding. And then the finish is done. It's finished. But what do you think? I think it's gorgeous. Do you gorgeous. like the way it's all coming oh, together? Oh, it's just stunning. And, and in the beginning, I could never have imagined how this would all come together and how the, even just the simple thing of this bias here just flows it through and ties it all together and makes it look absolutely stunning. And it, it's just a collection that you pulled out of the... Just the scraps. So like <laughs> these could we could have had multiple colours here. Mm. These could have been all different creams mm. and these could have all been different colours and these could be different colours. So you know, working with your stash, working with the scraps, it's amazing yep. how it all works out. But when we put these triangles on and why we can't put these on before the next lesson, we have to get this all flowing and we have to get everything flowing because remember you did two sets of triangles. Yes. You've got Two with the purple facing this way 
and two with the floral facing. So, so you've got to make sure you balance them out. Need to put them on the right way. <laughs> so, you know, and they're just the little challenges that you have to be aware of because it's so easy just to pick up a piece and sew it on. And then when you get it on, you think, oh, oh no, I what have, have I done? I should have done it the other way. So it's worth laying your quilt out on a design wall or having somewhere where you can lay it out before you start stitching everything together. Get a good look at how it's flowing and what matches, exactly. how it balances. Exactly. So you're right with your homework? I think I am. I'm going to be quilting a sashing. And what else did you have to do? Oh, please remember. Oh, I have to make some more bias. That's right. Yes. So if you get that ready for the next lesson, we'll start putting it all together. So there'll be a fair bit of stitching and making your sashings. and But it's really just um, repeating some of the things we've done. It's mm -hmm. like a little repeat. Um, the sashings made the same. Mm-hmm. You know, this way we joined it between the block. Remember, we put the spacer strip we in, did. which is our We're piece of backing. We're not doing the same with this one, are no. we? No. No. So this method here I call between the block, mm -hmm. cool she go technique. This one here is back to back. The back to back technique. So we're sewing it on. Well, we'll cover that next yep, time, I think. Yep, yep, So, And That's I think okay. you'll enjoy it. Lovely. All right, so off you go and do your homework. I will. And we'll see Hand you next over. time. <laughs> it's all ready to go. And don't forget, use the sew slip mat. Oh, the sew slip mat? When you're quilting. This sew slip mat here? Yep, that. Make sure you use it. You know, it. there's a French word for this? No. It's a doot do do Trust you. <laughs> but don't forget to put that on the machine because we're starting to get bulk now. It's going to just help everything move through. So <laughs> leave it to Joey. <laughs> All right, we'll see you. I'm going to send her off to do some homework, settle it down. So we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Oh. I forgot. What'd you forget? You better tell them to look at our website to look at all these great products. Absolutely. Don't forget to look at the website, www.pqw.com.au. Have a look at all of the wonderful products and there's a few more new templates there to have there a look are. at and there's a few nice bundles to have a look at. Um, yeah, keep an eye on it. And we're putting new products up all the time and don't forget... We design and we manufacture the products right here at PQW. It's in all our Australian little factory. made and I think that's the, that's the thing we should be proudest of. We are. But we ship all over the world. We do. So, and I know we've got a lot of people from the UK, Canada, um, the US, Zimbabwe, yeah, yeah. Um, US watching our Toots on Tuesday. So hi to you all out there. Hi. Keep watching and keep spreading the word. We'd love <laughs> you to do it. All right, that's it. See you next time. Okay, bye. 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 How to trim a <laughs> How to trim your triangles? Trim your triangles. Trim your triangles. Trim your triangles. <laughs> and prepare a sashing. Take one. She got the giggles. Yep, she she totally got the giggles about the do do do. I'm glad we well, didn't tell you about it first. <laughs> well, yeah, and I thought they're not going to say anything about that. I've been written so well, that, I had to wait for you to say uh, something about it so that I could. It would follow on.